wake up everybody No more sleeping in bed No more back to thinking Time for thinking ahead The world has changed so very much From what it used to be There's so much hatred War and poverty Oh Hello, brothers and sisters. My name is Richard Koritz. I'm proud to be the co-host of You Gotta Laugh to Keep From Crying, sponsored by North, North Carolina, Carolina Triad Jobs with, with Justice. Justice. And the where man, we can be reached where, at, oh, okay. where we can be reached at 336-272-2758. Yes. And I am very pleased and, and uh, feel privileged to be the co-host with a wonderful human being who happens to be my brother, comrade, friend, and much more, um, brother Oliver Wendell Sweeney, otherwise known What's as up? OW. That's right. And how it's you doing good to be brother? here as always yes, with you. Is. Yes, it is. Yes, and uh, yes. now that we've already showed how we know that phone number, oh, yes. and we know who sponsors the show, oh, yes. we can immediately turn to our fine guest, who's a, a person that we've supported as a friend, as a community activist, and now uh, we think highly of her as a new, still, still pretty new, city council member, and that is our friend Sharon Hightower. Thank you. Sharon, as glad always, have good you to see you. Good to be here. Glad and to it's thank good you. to have somebody on the show that we don't have to present a new pin to because you've already received the highest award some time ago. Yeah, I've been honored to have yeah. 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 Workers yeah. deserve that respect. Thank oh, you yes. very much. So, right. yes. so, yes. so you know, since the last time you were on, I think you were on with Sister Mary Kay Abu's waiter the last time. Uh, she was the veteran uh, city council member, and you were the newbie. Yes, still uh, am. Yeah, but but uh, <laughs> so now, in a way, I guess you could give us sort of a of a report of what you've learned in this first period as a new uh, city council member. If you want to draw some lessons for us. Well, there's a whole lot of lessons out there to be learned. That's for sure. Uh, I'm still a newbie. I'm still learning. Um, but I think I've gotten the process and the procedure down. Yeah. Uh, You're not smiling quite as much as you used to. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And you got to laugh to keep from crying. <laughs> but anyway. That yeah. sounds reasonable now, don't it? Yeah, it does. It, re it really does. It really, truly does. Um, and, uh, yeah, and the things that I've learned over the past few months um, have been rather interesting. Uh, how the city looks at development, um, how we operate internally uh, mm -hmm. with city staff, and um, the way we can begin to make policy, make changes um, for our city uh, is quite sometimes a cumbersome process. Mm -hmm. Not as easy as we would hope it to be, uh, not as open, and uh, sometimes not as friendly as it needs to be. Yeah. But do you think that some of that is because we live in a society in which there are haves and have-nots? Absolutely. And and the question of development means who's going to get jobs, who's going to get jobs that pay decently, uh, who's going to get contracts on which they can extract profit from the labor of working people and, and, and the like. And more important, that community development where uh, Malcolm X said that dollar needs to turn over in the community. Right. Say where they just come in the daytime and uh, collect all the money when they leave at night, they leave you with a ghetto. So it, it also has to become up that, that community development. So I guess the people out in the community have to rise up. Yeah, bit. I think our, our community sometimes can be a little quiet, a little complacent. Um, I know they won't change. I know they want good jobs. Um, and we also have to, as a city, let the people know that come into our city to develop, you know, create uh, our economic opportunity or to make profits. what we expect yeah. what we expect right you know how we expect them to treat our citizens if you come in uh, yeah you need to work with local people you need to be able to turn that dollar back in uh, over and over again here in the community not just come and take and go and leave you know um, and I've been a big proponent of pushing the MWBE um, program, spell, spell it out for which is Minority audience. Women Business Enterprise. Right. Uh, it's a program that the city has and 
all, a lot of cities have, where when we did the parity study, we realized where we are, we're on the unequal side of things. We don't get the big contracts and the jobs. Uh, every now and then we get a small piece of something, you know, when a developer has a project. And so now what we're saying is, if you're going to utilize city money, then you've got to work with the citizens that are here in the city, particularly those minority and women that typically don't get the work. Right. And we've got to change the way we do business here so that the people in this city feel like they are a part. And they will turn the dollar over. They also need to make a fair wage. They don't need to just make a minimum wage. You can't buy a home. You can't sustain a family over a period of time with simple minimum wage. You just can't. Right. It, it, that, you know we, we you know that we agree with John Representative. That, that. That's one thing I can't seem to understand why the certain governments or certain political ideological people believe that uh, a minimum wage is, is something you should have instead of a living wage because I figure when you have a minimum wage you're hurting your community uh, because you're not really uh, growing the community it's, 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 it stays in a slow motion instead of moving in a fast motion it's just like this here 1010 that uh, President the, the, president, the president have introduced, and you know uh -huh. I'm not a fan of anything that's not a living wage. I love the fact there's a living wage, and, and they need to tell them. I would like to see... Uh, Wait a minute, but you're not saying 1010 is a living wage. Beg your pardon? You are not saying that 1010 is a living wage. I just want <laughs> I want our viewers... If we wasn't on I camera, I'd put you back no, in my house. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> It sounded to me like that. No, I know that, but the way it came across, it sounded like that. So I wanted our audience. Ten, ten is nowhere near the living wage. Absolutely, it's about half. It's almost half a living wage. That's nowhere. Right. The yeah. full thing is a living wage. Right. Um, right. And, and, and when I was talking about these political, ideological, where they talk about, uh, well, we need to have upward mobility. How can you have upward mobility? You you got to have two ten, seven twenty five dollars seven. Seven seven dollars twenty five cent job. You gotta have two of them to support your family. So you ain't no, home. Three, three of them. No, I didn't say you were supporting your family completely. Oh, okay. no, you were just su to okay. support your family. Yeah. Yes, okay. it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a support a, com a complete support of the family. It, it, it only thing it does is keep you in poverty. Yeah, but at seven twenty five an hour, you would need three shifts every day that's 24 hours a day you'd have to work yes and, yeah. and from my understanding here in Gifford County a living wage is probably 22 hours an hour so right. three, three of them jobs wouldn't work yeah, three three would work would not work but you but you but because you wouldn't have it'd be time to to sleep. $22 an hour okay but it wouldn't quite come up with 22 it's just about 20 it would be close it'd be close but it wouldn't, wouldn't quibble about that <laughs> But, but, I would. but when would you sleep? That's the question. Hey. When would you so, eat? So, hey. When would you see your friends and family? Family. Yeah. How would you raise your children? Right. Exactly. Right. Well, okay. people who are working two jobs often aren't doing those types of things, being at home, right. uh, being able to go to PTA, being able to go to children's programs at school. I mean, you need to have a balanced family life. You ought to be able to work an eight-hour job. Sustain your family, spend time with them, become a homeowner and a taxpayer, and feel good about yourself at the right. same time. Right. And people working two and three jobs don't have the time to stop and have time to really enjoy themselves. They live a stressful life. And you shouldn't have to live like that. You should right. be able to live stress-free. We all ought to be able to have many of the amenities that are offered out there. I'm not saying that, you know, we all want to live in a mansion. But the home we go to should be our mansion. Yes. And, uh, you know, that's the way we need to start looking at our community, how to build our community, build the equity and the pride in our community. And we talk about revitalization of our neighborhoods and homes, but people have to have the income to be able to invest back into their home to keep our neighborhoods up. Right. But oftentimes they don't. <coughs> And then we, want, we find ourselves with neighborhoods where the houses are boarded up or they're not in very good condition. Mom passes away and leaves it to a child and the child's working but not able to understand, you know, just what they've got to do to keep that house in the neighborhood looking, you know, reasonable and decent. So no job is going to come to an area where the housing stock is on the low end. 
just not. And a lot of our neighborhoods want economic development to come into a neighborhood or a new development. But when you look at the boarded up structures and the boarded up, the vacant warehouses and things, they're not coming. The jobs are not coming here. The economic development that we want and talk about is not coming until we do some things in our neighborhoods and communities that are going to improve that look and help our people go to work. Yeah, it's kind of like which comes first, the chicken or the egg, because you also mentioned uh, as we were coming on the, on the air the importance of people coming out when development issues are facing the city council. Right. You were urging that people need to come out, so that we are, that's the other side of it. Yeah, it's very important for people to come out, express their concern, speak out. This is their city. Um, but there appears to be a lot of apathy when there are certain developers that have projects and, and people say, well, they've got all the money and so they're going to do it the way they want to do it. And I don't have a say in that. Um, and I think that that's not true. Well, you're proof that an active community person like yourself can not only speak up, which you've done over the years, but now you're in a policy-making position as long as you get the backing from the community to enforce right. your vote on that council. So that's, an, that's a, your, your election was a source of encouragement for us and should be a source of encouragement for the people, but it's only the beginning. Oh, absolutely. Then, then the people have to be there behind you oh, yeah. in that effort. Well, they do. I can only speak out so much. I know how it feels to have to fight for a neighborhood to be recognized and to be treated fair. I know what that's like from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And it's a tough fight, don't get me wrong. You have to sacrifice some time, going to a meeting, staying late, you know. Um, but it's worth it in the end when you feel like you accomplished something. And that's what we have to believe in our community, that we are an integral part of how things happen. Mm -hmm. And we can make them happen. And people will stop and stand up and notice when the neighborhood comes together and says, no, we don't want you to do this. We, we don't want that White Street landfill to be reopened. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because we respect ourselves and each other too much. I agree. Yeah. You, you, you bring that up, and I was at a meeting for the uh, uh, concern, because no, 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 Citizens for Environment and Economic Justice. Okay. And they took a vote of people who was there of who wanted to transfer some garbage from one spot to the landfill to the other part of the landfill. I was on the side that says transfer the, the garbage. The people who won that vote uh, were saying ship it out somewhere else. And what happened then is that they, they said they're going to take another vote at the northeast uh, Concerned citizens group, which I thought was a big joke, and I just thought it was just uh, a, a thing because I was going along with the fact of saving the city eight hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. I go along with that fact. I'm not going to sit in and try to. Right. But when the people who voted was the majority that they should send the garbage the way they've been sending it and taking the city right there, they because they didn't get the vote that they wanted, mm -hmm. they wanted to hold another vote. And it, I never did make it to that meeting because I've been doing different things and uh, being out of town is one of them. Uh, well, I wanted to sit up in that meeting and tell those people the vote has already been taken. We who voted to save the city $800,000 lost. There should not be another vote. Right. right. I agree. I agree. I didn't make the CEEJ meeting. Um, and I was a little late for the Concerned Citizen meeting, which was last Thursday, and they did talk about the landfill. I don't know if they had the vote. But I think you're right. Once we get a position, we need to stand firm on that. Right. We don't always agree how that position comes out, but I should respect your right to have that vote, and if you come out on the majority end, then I should support well, your... Well, just like Brother Sweeney just did, yes. he himself did. Yeah. That's one of the things we love about him, isn't yeah. it? Yes, that yes. He's, that, because, uh, he's that kind of person. I, and and, and yes, I haven't true. found out how that vote went on yet, but I, it's, 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 I'm going to find out. And if they try to reverse it again, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm gonna have to get another vote. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. two, I mean, 
uh, one and one, you right. always got to have so a tiebreaker. you need the best right? two out of three. <laughs> That's right. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. But, you know, you, one time when you were on our show, Sharon, you, you said uh, that um, you talked about when you first uh, played an active role in the community uh, effort that was successful. And I'd like you to share that again if you remember it. I think it was the one at Barbara, Barbara Park. Park. Yeah, yeah, back to so I'd like, back. I'd like you to share it with our viewers because to me that's really inspiring. So if you would, just briefly talk about that. Well, some years ago um, when they began to expand Barbara Park, they did a um, sample of the soil. And, you know, it used to be an old landfill dumping ground. Um, and they found some soil that was contaminated. And of course, the remedy was to haul the soil out, uh, put in a ground well, and check the water periodically that was going through uh, the part to make sure it was safe. And so the neighbor concern was, well, you know, that soil's contaminated. We're not going to know what happens to it. That all sounds good, but they won't tell us one thing. They'll open that park up. We'll never know. We'll be walking on or what, you know, our children will be a part of. And so I went to council. And Keith Holliday was the mayor mm -hmm. at the time. And I spoke out and I said, before you open that park, you need to have a community conversation. Tell us what you did, how you did it, and how it's going to affect our lives. Um, and they all agreed. They said, mm -hmm. sure, no problem. We, we hear you and we'll do that. Well, I got wind that the day before in October they were going to open the park. No community, the community meeting, no, no community. conversation, right. no phone call, nothing. Right. I, so when I got wind of it, I called every single solitary council person. And I got one pushback from Tom Phillips. And he said, well, I don't know what the neighborhood wants. And I said, we told you what we wanted. You didn't honor your word. You did not come to us and have a meeting and say to us, this is our remedy. This is the solution. This is how we're going to work to make sure you feel safe in your neighborhood and in this park. We consider Barbara Park our own park, even though it's a regional park in the right. city. Uh, it's what we consider in the neighborhood. It's close. It's, it's your beautiful. neighborhood. Yeah, it's a yes, neighborhood yeah. resource. And so, yeah, yeah right. we, 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 um, we love it. We walk in it and we, you know, enjoy it and have many good times now in the shelter and, and so forth. But at that time, you know, they hadn't done all the improvements yet, but they were beginning to look at that. And so I spoke with Mayor Yvonne Johnson at the time. Well, she wasn't mayor at the time. She was Mayor Pro Tem and uh, Ms. Keith Holliday. And they both said, we will, we're glad you called. We did not know, but we'll stop it. And so they stopped the opening of that park. The rationale for opening the park was to support the tennis, the private tennis instructors business. And I said, that's not my concern. Right. You know, I said, whether he makes money or not is neither here nor there. It's what you say you would do publicly. I hold you to it. If you don't, I'm going to publicly say out loud that you did not do what you said you were going to do. And this is how you treat us. And so they did. They stopped the opening of the park, and they did. They came back, and I'd say the park opened maybe 30-some days later, but after we had the meeting. And... Um, the neighbors, we all appreciated the fact that you, they heard our voice. And so that told me that if you speak up and you speak out loud enough, somebody will listen to you. And that's the way we have to do it now. We cannot stop speaking out, voicing our opinion, and having concerns in our community and making sure they're heard and heard loudly. And when that happens, you have a successful neighborhood and a successful city as well. We, and I, I appreciate you sharing that again because a lot of a lot of our brothers and sisters in our communities, especially in the less affluent communities that we live in, three of us, uh, don't uh, <laughs> appreciate their own power right. and their own voice. And and uh, so I think that <coughs> that's a great story for Thank that you. reason. And and they have to understand nobody reads their mind. That's right. Uh, they have to go down there, so you so you raise a little hell. Who cares? I mean, you know, it's your right. Well, I we've mean. certainly heard you <laughs> on many occasions. Not him. And, uh, oh, no. I appreciate. I mean, I've appreciated I, I, your. I mean, I, I, I want the citizens to go down there because um, 
they're spending your money. Right. Or I, as I like to say, my money. That's right. I like to make it personal. <laughs> I like want people to feel that it's personal. I want them to feel like that dime is coming out their pocket because it is coming out of their pocket. It is coming <laughs> out. That's and, right. And they need to sit down there and say, "Well, I need my dime to do this here. I need my dime to do that." So, so, so that's what I'm saying. I don't mind going down there and and, and give them a, a little piece of my mind. It ain't got much to give, but oh, yeah. I, I, I give a little bit of it. You do a great job. <laughs> but anyway, you know. It, you, when you mentioned the MWB and E, I think it is. MWB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, that even with that in the city, women and minorities especially have gotten not even the share, the minimum share right. of business opportunities That's good. that they're supposed to get. So even with that M B MWB -E, mm -hmm. uh, being there. So that's another reason why. Uh, People from oppressed communities and women need to be uh, showing themselves at the city at the, council at these meetings, yeah. and especially mm -hmm. because even to me, and I'm a college graduate and all of this, and I'm white supposedly and so forth. Um, but the idea of development sounds to me even like it's a big word. That you know, what does it mean? But right. what it really is talking about jobs with justice, right? And it's talking about. Uh, yeah. Profit-making enterprises. Right. You know, one thing that really shocks the heck out of me. Decent and living wage. Is like right. I like to kick you. Yes, absolutely. But the the uh, you know, a year or two ago, Skip Alston, who I work with on the on the museum board, and Dina Hayes, who's now the chairperson of the of the board, were two of the black people who were involved with some effort to get a downtown hotel. Mm -hmm. And at the time, the News and Record and all these different folks were. Find and fault the, the the Weaver Quintance group and all of that. Wow. They had all kinds of criticisms of why Skip Alston and Dina Hayes and those other black people were getting involved with trying to get a, a hotel downtown. Then the same those same people that have been complaining came came down and said we have a plan to get a hotel downtown, and that was okay. Uh, uh, yeah, to me that that's an example of development that's. That, that's the wrong kind of development. What, 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 what you see, yeah, sure. and what killed yeah. me about that, yeah. one of those exactly. developers who, who's now probably putting up a hotel there, want to block off a street. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it ticked me off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what ticked me off was the double standard. No, right. and, and the double standard. I, I the, yeah. No, he. Well, well, there's nothing wrong with having minority ownership. No, it's nothing wrong. No, there's nothing wrong with no, having minority ownership. Positive but, but, about having right. minority. But, but the point is, what he was standing up, and I, I, I properly in my mind saying he's uh, must have some racial bias in him somewhere somehow. Oh, I can't believe that. Uh, because the first thing he jumped <laughs> onto, and, and 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 for the life of me, I can't understand why people. Uh, because you got your thing, you see somebody doing something, you're going to criticize them by the way they are doing it because that's not the way you do it. The, the thing that's was, not why they criticize them. They no, criticize them no, because it, they, they, they don't want their profits jeopardized. That's why they criticize them. I understand that. It's that the, it's, the other thing is only an excuse. It's, it's, it's a greed in there, but that's it's, right. it, it, it make it racially biased because they don't want you to make none of that money. Well, there it is. All right, but you know, if, if when but, you live in a cap, wait a minute, when you live in a capitalist country, any capitalist, no matter what his or her color, nationality, origin, whatever, they're out for maximum private profit. And so, if you live in a white supremacist society like this one, then why wouldn't whites who are in business and are trying to make maximum profit, why wouldn't they use white supremacy? As one of their weapons to try to make sure they keep making maximum keep profits. Making money. Yeah. So I know you understand that very well. Yeah, you remind me of that line piece of paper. We hold these truths to be self evidence that all men are created equal. Yeah, but you meanwhile, better be ready to fight me, for it. Meanwhile, they got people there in chains and slaves. So ah, you know, so, so you, you know go. that's a lie. Yeah. But 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 the you point know. is, <laughs> they want you to do good as long as they're paying you seven twenty five an hour. That's right. <laughs> They want you to do good and only pay you seven twenty five an hour. No, you do it. Keep good. doing and keep you're doing, doing good. good. No, they yeah. pay you seven twenty five an hour. Yeah. From their point of view. Yeah, they pay. Because they're reaping you. all kinds of profits That's off right. of your That's labor. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And then they want to complain about uh, why your children out here running the streets when you can't be home with them because you got to have two of them seven twenty five dollars an hour to try to make things meet. Right. Mm. 
well, well let's we, let's, tough, let's, let's right. give our sister sister councilwoman yes. Sharon Hightower the last word. Okay. We did we never did get into the question of what some of the tensions are that are currently on the council that you might be feeling. So maybe we should get a couple of words on that. Yeah. Well, there are some tensions. There are no questions um, yeah. about that. Um, I ask a lot of questions. I've always been a person who asks a lot of questions because I want to know an answer. And if you tell me an answer that logically makes sense, I don't ask any more questions. But I feel like as a council representative, I owe my constituents that right to know information to mm -hmm. people who can't get the city council. But I get a lot of people say I watch it on TV. Mm -hmm. And so, and they say I appreciate what you say. Um, I ask questions from, I try to from a common sense perspective so that people get it. Well, some of my fellow council members think I ask too many questions. They think a couple of my other uh, council members ask too many questions. We question the things that they feel like they've already put a stamp on. And so what we should do is rubber stamp it along with them. I disagree with that. First of all, I'm new. You need to tell me what you've done, how you've done it, and why we arrived at where we are. And in order to do that, I have to ask you that question. What is this about? What does this mean? How is it going to impact and benefit my district? You know? well, let's say this thing. We're pleased that you're a, a city council member who represents the interests of the 99%. And we're pleased to be with you. And, and, I, I, and I got news for you, Madam Hallett. Yes. Uh, when you ask those questions, there's some people on the other side of town that you represent you. So keep asking the questions. They're glad you asked the question too, because they don't fully understand it. And, right. and they have to. Uh, yeah, they have to put it out there. And, 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 and rubber stamp ain't nothing like that, but a rubber stamp. And anyway, our, our viewers can reach Sister Hightower by calling us at 336 272 2758. Let's come together. Working people of the world, come on, let's come together. We got nothing to lose but our chains. Nothing to lose but our chains. We got nothing to lose but our chains. Neighborhood school, too many kids never learn to read. People losing their homes, what does the government care? They're doing a dirty deed. Old man sleeping on the cold street, they took his dream, he's gone to sleep.